So, wiring up tortoise point motors, how hard can that be? So welcome back to uh, the third and final video of fitting these, uh, these tortoise point motors, which is invariably wiring them up. In the uh, comments section of the previous vid video, um, a gentleman called Simon Chedzoy mentioned that, and it was, it was an ex extremely fair point, that um, obviously I'm doing this horizontally or I'm actually laying these down and it's very, very simple to get to these tortoise motors to do the wiring, to do the assembly and to do the soldering. Whereas if you've got an existing layout and you want to swap your Pico uh, point motors for a slow action one, then yes, it's going to be reasonably accessible to fit the point motor, but to get under there and do all the soldering it would clearly be difficult. And what Simon mentioned was to build uh, a little breakout cable. So that's what I've done here. Um, and all eight connections just feed straight into a, a, an eight block chocolate block. So when you, get, you can get the soldering done before you go underneath the layout and, and assemble it. So you can put this block you know, into position wherever it should go and then to one side put the chocolate block and then connect straight up into there. Obviously you need to work out your own um, cable colours to avoid confusion but you just do it to one side. But just do make sure you route um, the cables away from the action of the wire. So thank you Simon, a very good point. Um, one other point I'd, I'd like to make is when I finished um, at the end of the last video, I put, I put the other um, four motors in, in as, you, as you can see, and then it come to, came to cutting off these um, actuation wires. Fine. So the first mistake I made was I brought out my is it Exudon or whatever it is, wire cutters my, for cutting rails, and yes, I've, uh, I've pretty well ruined these now because this is high tensile steel and the, the steel that's used on, um, on, the, on the rails clearly isn't as hard as this so I've got a couple of good chunks missing from my lovely pliers. What a fool. Um, and the other thing I did, when I, when I was cutting through this I held the actuation wire and then came in on the side with the cutters and when the cutters actually went through such was the violence that the wire then went straight up into my thumb. Ow, a little bit of blood, anyway, but uh, we live and learn. And the third thing I, I, I sort of thought of, well, discovered, was when I fitted these point motors, it's all about sound, isn't it? To try to repress the sound of the point motors changing is why I went down this avenue in the first place. Um, and I changed my mind. I took off the point, first point motor and then put in, put in a small slither of, uh, of cork, just the same sort of cork that you would use um, underneath your, your, your track bed um, and then refitted uh, that point motor and the subsequent three all with a layer of cork um, just to help deaden the sound um, so that there is no drumming effect of the plastic boss onto the, um, onto the, the layout board if that makes sense. I don't know if it make any difference but it was certainly worth doing um, just in case it did. So what I've also done is I've installed a small uh, MDF board which holds down a Digitrax Digi um, uh, point controller known as a DS64. And what I did is I mounted it on a piece of MDF and then put it on screws so that when the board lays flat this um, uh, I'll be able to maintain it by lowering this flap down and getting it at the front of the layout. So that's where you see this MDF board. There's another two gaps here because if you're into Digitrax and um, block detection then I'll probably put a BDL168 block detector in here and also an SC8C uh, module to control the signals. So that's what that board's about. So I'll just screw that back in. So, it's, so in the position it's in now, it will be held uh, clear of the layout. If in subsequent years I decide to put a fiddle yard underneath this layout, then I've made the board quite short, so it will only come down sort of about eight inches, so it would still be clear if I should have a, a fiddle yard underneath if I decide to 
to change the, the aspect of the layout entirely. So there we go. So here on close up on this, uh, on this point motor, what you can see is these are the two uh, 12 volt DC lines, the blue and the yellow, that switch the slow action point motor. So um, obviously when the point, point motor is thrown, then the actuator runs in the opposite direction until it stops out, um, the motor stalls and the, the function finishes. But, all, but power is always supplied to that end. And then obviously when you throw it the other way, um, again on those two cables, the thing just runs back the other way. I've pre-soldered in the, um, the frog um, and what I'm going to do is, let's, let's say this is um, uh, contact one and that's contact eight. So I've got uh, one and eight are obviously the positive and negative uh, coming out of the controller. And two and three will be um, the track uh, connections to enable me to throw the frog. And what I shall do now is, is hopefully um, solder those in in front of you here. Um, so obviously what you need to do is you clearly need to, um, ouch, hurt my finger. Let me just take that rough bit off. So with the cables tinned, I just put a little bit of solder onto the contacts on the tortoise itself. And so this is track power. So this is going on to uh, contacts two and three. And there's two. And there's three. I'm sorry you couldn't see that a little better, a bad uh, camera position, I'm afraid. Um, but hopefully you can see now. So there's the, the, the two that throw the uh, power. There's the, the, the track power coming in um, for both rails. And then obviously when the point motor changes, um, the internal switch will change the output from um, either the red onto the green or from the black onto the green, whichever um, one is required by the frog. Before we go any further, I want to talk about this thing here, this Digitrax DS64. Now, if you, if you, uh, you have a lens system or NCE or whatever, I'm sure they've got their own kind of proprietary gadgets to do the same thing. But one special feature that a lot of people don't realise on this DS64, that if you power it separately and not from track power, um, then if you get a short where, as you've just driven the locomotive into the point the wrong way around, as you're aware, the whole... Um, layout will shut down or perhaps that particular sector will shut down but you can't change the point now because it's a short circuit. So if you power that, that's exactly what happens if you power this item from track power. However, if you power it from um, an, an ordinary 12 volt DC source coming in on, an, on a separate terminal, then when that happens and you drive your locomotive into the point the wrong, that's set the wrong way and you get the short, you simply change the point because this system here then hasn't got the short circuit, it isn't isolated so you can change the point over therefore the, the short disappears and you can drive your locomotive straight on. All kind of makes sense. So we've got um, a Digitrax controller on the table and that brings in the Digitrax signal. Um, I have a handset um, to switch the point and then all I've done with those two cables, the blue and the yellow, is brought them um, with a little bit of slack here because I've got to build it in so that this panel swings and they go into the first set of terminals. I bought this DS64 second hand so you really don't know um, if it's any good. I hadn't used it before, it sat in a box for well over a year. So the first thing I did with it, with it was reset it to the factory defaults because I wouldn't know if it's set to do slow action turnouts or whether it's to do solenoids or whether it's got any other features um, that have been selected. I don't know what the, um, the uh, point numbers are, whether they're one, two, three, four or whatever. So I've reset it to the factory defaults um, and I've then subsequently reset it to work slow action points and not 
um, and not solenoid points. So all should be well and when, it, when it's in that configuration then it, it, uh, the points are numbered uh, where their addresses are 1, 2, 3 and 4. So with my little controller and my reading glasses if I select on here switch um, 0, 1 and then we have a throw and a close option so if I press close and the point runs and if I press throw then it will go back the other way. At this time what I don't know of course is whether these two track cables are soldered the right way around so that the frog um, has got the right power because obviously if it's the wrong way around then whatever happens when you, when you change the point the frog will always have the wrong polarity. So it's only a case then of turning the board over, putting a meter on it, testing the point to, uh, to see if it's right or just simply just running a loco down it um, and then changing it over and you might have to resolder those two. Um, as Simon mentioned if you use a breakout board of course that would be so much easier because you just um, take out cables two and three, reverse them, pop them back in the other way and it's bound to work properly. So what's left for me to do now is obviously wire up all the rest of the points, um, get it all singing and dancing and, and, and tested um, and make sure it's all good to go and then configure these cables back, tie them all back, shorten, shorten them and then run a bit of slack so in future when this board is, is laid down and I want to maintain any of these items then it will simply have enough uh, slack in the cable run to allow me to carry out any maintenance and that's kind of where we are all kind of good to go. A few days ago I shot a section of video which I'm going to show you now um, because what I omitted to tell you is how to take out the springs of a point that's already um, installed on your on your layout so there are two different uh, Pico springs so that's the section of video I shall run now. On the previous video I showed you how to remove the spring uh, from a Pico point that wasn't installed simply by uh, pulling it out from the underside. However, as you can see on this point here, it's already installed, so therefore I'm going to have to remove the point um, without getting it from underneath. And when you examine this point, you can see that there are two small tabs here and here that need to be um, turned back and then this small plate I believe then lifts out. So I'll try to turn these tabs back and they are in there just so I'm just trying to use a scalpel blade just to get underneath them and to start the process of turning them back and that seems to do it. So I take away this small plate and underneath it you can see the spring and there hopefully you can see it. So all we need to do is pop this, oh just check the point moves relatively freely which it does. A little bit of friction there but I'm sure the, the point motor uh, will overcome that so then I need to pop this little piece back in and then turn those tabs back.
And there we have it. A little bit further on is another pico medium radius point, which is slightly different again. And the tabs on this one are considerably different. So I imagine they're underneath this plate here. And it looks as if they bend from the outside in. I just find it's easier to use the scalpel to bend it up initially because of the fineness of the of the blade. So there's one tab and if I change the point over and then fetch up the other tab Imagine this centre section will now lift out. And there underneath it is the spring. And there's the spring released. Okay, reassemble that. Or oh, just check the point moves freely. And yes, it does. Then I need the small plastic part. Which I can't see. There it is. Pop it back into place. And then bend the tabs back. They kind of seesaw when you push one down the other one pops up so obviously you need to press them both down at the same time and does the yep i need to push down a little bit further to make sure that the switch blades pass freely over the top of it. And they do. Well, I think that just about wraps it up for today. I've uh, obviously got to finish wiring all this lot up and put it back into the DS64. 
um, and then back onto the top of the board to make sure that the, um, the right frogs switch and also the throw and the close commands suit that point, um, if you know what I mean, because you don't want it to throw when actually it should be in the closed position, if that kind of makes any sense to you. Um, I've hoped you enjoyed it. As usual, please don't forget to subscribe and there should be a video here and here um, if you want to uh, watch some more of this channel. Next time it should be on um, wiring up the power bus. So hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks a lot and bye bye.